Mm. That's the sound of my tire completely violating my fenders. So when I fully turn to the right, it's destroying my mud flap right here. But then if I come on the other side, I'm also rubbing like crazy up here. You can see like I'm literally chipping away at it a little bit already right there. So we're gonna take this out completely. We're gonna take the mud flaps out and then we're gonna trim a little bit of this, bring it back and then hopefully push. I don't know if you can see that, but we'll push that forward. So hopefully it's not rubbing anymore because it's just really loud. Like I'm not trying to, yeah, literally violation. I said that earlier, that's what it feels like. So we're gonna take that out and we should be chilling. We should be Gucci and then, um, yeah. And then we'll have a perfect car from there. Man, when I tell you I love a clean car, I can't even, <sighs> I can't even put it into words, man. I really can't, but we got the toolbox. The mole stuff or mole, however you say it, is coming in so freaking handy. Like, look at this. Like, this stuff could not be any better for me right now. Like, it's completely taken away all the space that my book bags and stuff would have been right here, literally just by hanging it up. And hopefully soon, now that it's like fall time and the leaves are changing and stuff, I'll be able to start going camping a little bit, just taking it out different spots. And I, I think it's gonna be a game changer for that as well. But whoo, man, the car looks so good right now. So clean, so spotless. Ooh, some of y'all, man, and y'all little trash bags with wheels. Not that your car sucks, but that there's trash everywhere. Couldn't be me. All right, so first thing, we're gonna take these off. It looks like there's just a couple bolts there. If I had to guess, it's probably 10 mil. Um, that's pretty much what every single one is anywhere ever, yep. And also the one that people lose every single time as well. So we're gonna take those off and it looks like it has a couple clips that we need to take off. And then after that, it seems like it's kind of it. Another one. I used to think that my favorite smell was a new car smell, but I honestly think my favorite smell might be a new tire smell, if I'm being honest. All right, those are out. We're gonna use this to pop out the little pins for the other stuff and we're good. Uh, my little orange thing did not like that. If it wants to play games, it's gonna get hurt. Hey man, how are the bolts easier than the pins? Upgrading to the big guns. All right, so the issue is that they're just really old and they've never come off. So it's not that, like they're just breaking when I try to pull it out. I thought it was just, I'm doing it wrong, but it's just, they're like glued on practically. I guess just heat and stuff from the tires coming back. So. Um, yeah, we're just, we're not putting it back. Well, this might be an issue. Okay, we got it out, but before I take the other one out, I'm gonna turn the car back on and just turn the wheel and see if it's actually hitting or not now. Cause if it's gonna hit anyway, then I might as well just leave them on, but I don't think it's gonna hit. So let's see. Hey, check it out. I can fit almost a whole finger back. Th pause I, that's crazy so we're gonna go and we're gonna take the other side out and then I'll come and I'll start doing the trimming all right just got to make sure that it's not gonna hit on this side as well and then we should be good we're golden so the only thing I can think of that might be might be problematic in any way is if I actually need to use my suspension I think if I start you know like getting on uneven terrain or whatnot, I think eventually I will rub, but for just every day, you know, 90% of what I do is on the highway. For like all of that stuff, we should be okay. Like it should be fine, at least from the backside, pause. But then if I do right here, when we go to the front, um, it'll be a little different, obviously. We'll have to see, we'll have to actually trim. And yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I don't know exactly how we're gonna do this actually. I'm probably gonna look up a YouTube video or something real quick to see how the best way to do it is because that's not supposed to be like that. They just didn't clip, look at this man. They just didn't clip this thing back in. Like that's not supposed to just be chilling there. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I guess it, I guess you could say it ripped, but like, like geez, that's just flapping in the wind. This is the type of stuff I deal with, bro. 
This is the type of stuff I deal with. So we got to figure out how we're going to do this. I bought a Dremel today, so hopefully I'll use that to cut. I don't even know how to use a Dremel. So we're going to figure all this out. First time live coming at your boy. So, okay. So the good thing is that there is a bolt down here. Um, and it looks like if we take that out, it's just a Phillips head. It looks like we can actually just like push everything forward. I'm missing a bolt on the bottom of this. I'm not really sure exactly why that's not there, but I'm thinking that it'll be just enough to hold it even if we don't have that. I've obviously been missing that bolt for a while now and I haven't had any issues. So I'm just gonna completely take those bolts out and then I'm going to trim it a little bit and then we'll use that to push forward and hopefully get rid of that noise. So with this bolt out, oh yeah. We're gonna be chilling, bro. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little worried at first, but I think we're gonna be chilling. The bolt came out pretty easily and everything everything kind of moves kind of smoothly. Like it's not like there's a huge, um, <coughs> excuse me, there's not like a ton of resistance before it like starts to move. So I'm thinking that um, we can really just move this tire back the other way. And then from there, just trim a little bit and then see how much it's rubbing. Trim a little bit, see how much it's rubbing. And then ultimately we'll be able to move the whole thing forward, drill a hole and then put it in there. But the issue is I've never used a Dremel before. I picked this up from Harbor Freight Tools or whatever it's called. Um, it was very not expensive. So I don't have a lot of hope for it, but it came with a little accessory pack. I have no idea what's gonna be in there. And then I bought this separately it's just like some uh, rotary diamond cutting discs, which I feel like is what I'm gonna need to use for that, because I really doubt anything came in this thing. But I mean, who knows? I guess we're gonna, we're gonna see and figure out. Oh, nice. So a charger for the Dremel. It's a bunch of stuff in here, to be honest. You could probably cut with this thing. Yeah, surely that's what this is for, right? It's for cutting. That makes sense to me. We're gonna try this first. Hope maybe we won't have to use the other stuff. If I'm like doing something crazy, crazy, not smart in the comments, obviously you won't see this video until after I've already done it. But for future, don't let me die. So please let me know if I'm, if I'm doing something out of pocket. I probably am. No one told me to do any of this stuff. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of trying it out. So. We'll see. I have this, but how does this get onto this? And how does this get into this? Cause this has to go into this. Oh, okay. Oh, it's the whole thing, huh? Like that? Ha ha, okay. Oh, I get it. Okay, I'm dumb. And then spin that. Yes, let's go. Hey, I, I know I'm content creation right now, but you know, your boy used to be an engineer back in the day. You know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm too cute to die. You see how easy that comes off? Like how does it, like what if that would've just flown off right there? How do I keep it from, oh, I figured it out. So you push this lock button and then you tighten it. So now I can't pull it out. Man, I, hey, I practically built this, bro. I practically built this. I don't know how much I'm supposed to cut. I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I didn't like do any measurements or anything, so. Hey, it's working. Woo, that's hot, that's hot. It's cutting really freaking clean too. That's what I'm most impressed by. No way it ran out of battery right there. To be fully honest, I think that's gonna be almost enough to make it go through. It's looking kind of good. You have a good bit of space in between there. Now all it is is pushing this forward to where it doesn't hit. All we have to do is make a hole in this thing. This does have power because you're a beast. Safety goggles on, safety first. All right, so we put it in there. Everything looks good. So this should just be, will it hold? And if so, then we'll see. So I think we did it. I think it's where it needs to be. I haven't looked at it yet. Did we have clearance? Oh yeah. If we need to go back in and clear any more that way, we easily can go in and just trim some of that. All right, so we got good news and bad news. The bad news is that the Dremel never charged up. Like I said, I, I forgot that I had to plug it into the thing. Woo! Ooh, and just blew my camera down, but I caught it. Um, it never charged up, so we didn't get to use that. But the good news is that the last time I tried to trim, I trimmed extra on the other side, so I didn't even have to trim anything. All I had to do was to move, um, move whatever that black guard was like, um, like before. So I think, it's, I think we're good. I think we're at a spot where it's gonna work. And if we do rub, it might be like only full lock at like reverse or something, which truth be told, 
I am not mad about at all. All right. I'm kind of nervous. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little nervous to see what to see what it does. I'm just gonna drive around for a little bit. Oh yes, I'm at full lock. There is no rubbing so far. Nothing. All right, that was right side, but that's where we pushed further. So we're gonna take a long turn first and go all the way lock it left. Oh, <laughs> there's no rubbing. Okay, all the way again. I am fully locked out. I am fully locked out. Look at this. Look at those little wheels going. Yes, I am fully, fully locked out and there's no rubbing whatsoever. So that's really freaking nice. I'm gonna take this hard left again and then we'll see in reverse if it's gonna keep it or not. So fully locked, not yet. I'm not fully yet. Now I'm fully locked, no rubbing. Oh, thank God, praise Jesus. But it's that reverse that kills you. So let's see right now, put it in reverse. Jeez, is that my brakes? All right, fully locked. Now I'm rubbing a little bit. Let's see where that is real quick. It's on the left side, I heard it. It's hitting right there. But that's good, that's good. Even though, even though it seems like it's a bad thing, that's actually really good for us because all we have to do is wait for the Dremel to like finish, um, to finish charging and we don't have to push anything further back. All we have to do is take pictures or um, trim that up a little bit. So we're honestly chilling with that. Um, there's the rubber again, and that again, we're, we're fully, fully okay with that. What I need to make sure is that it's not doing it on the other side. So we're gonna try the same thing. Full lock this way. Same thing on that side as well. At like when you're fully, fully turned, like all the way, um, there's a little bit of rub, but again, it's only on that one side. So. I'm feeling pretty good. I feel good about that. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna pack everything up, just let this thing charge. I'll put it actually in the house to charge. I haven't eaten lunch yet, so I'll eat some lunch and then come back out and then we'll do the last bit of that and we'll call it a wraps. Why did I make this video? Oh yeah, I wanna show you guys the car. The car looks really nice, so let me show you guys that really quick and then I'll call it a day. Because a lot of people have been asking me about my 4Runner in general and like what, just everything about it. So I wanted to show you guys exactly what it is Excuse the parking job. Obviously, I was trying to see if it rubs, but so last time we talked, everything is the same except now on the wheels, we have 285s. So we're sitting right under a 33. I would have loved to put even bigger wheels on this, but it's just not practical. I didn't want to ruin my gas mileage fully and it wouldn't have fit. So it's up a little higher too. Earlier we had a two inch lift and nothing on the back, but now it's a three inch lift and a two inch lift on this side. And I was kind of scared. I hate this gap. Like I hate knowing that there's a gap or even seeing that there's a gap there. But honestly, it's not that bad. Like you really can't tell that there's a huge gap. On this side where the sun is shining, you might be able to see a little bit more, but like it's really, really not that bad. And obviously my wheel's not straight, but I think it raising it up that much has made an insane difference on just the overall look and feel of the car. And obviously we had to gum up a little bit so I wouldn't rub as much as I am, even though I'm rubbing anyway. So, I mean, it's working for me and against me. But you guys already saw the back of the car. You saw the, um, like the panels and stuff. The lights, obviously, we're already killing it with the lights from GTR lighting and then the fang lights from GTR as well. Just really gives a really dope look to the car. It just looks so much meaner now that it's raised up a little bit more. And obviously this is, it. I'm parked bad and we're on a slant so you can't see stuff the way that I'd like it to, but I, I'm really impressed. And I, I'm gonna put a little like, I'm hoping to make a little short video as well showing just some stuff in here. We got a new steering wheel as well. Oh, I love this thing so much. The red stitching is just absolutely fantastic. And then we've added a couple names to our list of, there's a lot of glare. It's kind of hard to see. Can I stop the glare? Maybe not. Anyway, oh, if I open this maybe, that didn't help. But instead of replacing this a long time ago, I just started getting people to sign it every time they ride in the car. So there's just a bunch of signatures on here that's really, really cool. Um, obviously everything else is the same. Got Kenya Street in the back right there. You've already seen the mole panels and all that good stuff. But yeah, I really just love this car. And this is honestly just an attempt of me to start like vlogging because I've been wanting to try to do that. 
So I was just walking you through exactly what I'm doing, figuring out stuff with my car. I hope to make this car or this page like specific to vehicles because I like that, but in the realm still of like photography, videography, just anything to do with like lenses and cameras. So if that's dash cams or me taking photos or me doing like little kind of like cool little films, like I hope to make one soon about the Forerunner and why I like it, just like interview style. So I'm hoping that it'll adapt to that stuff, especially when it comes to like sponsorships and things as well. But I think it's also kind of cool just to show you what I'm doing, to like bring you under the hood and like do some stuff that way. So yeah, this is my ride. I love it a lot. This is more, again, just like vlogging style, just so I can post something because I want to get more comfortable in front of the camera. But um, thanks for following along on the journey. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here for a while, I appreciate you. Make sure to show some love in the comments. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, all that good stuff. YouTube on my face. Love you guys. See you in the next one. Deuces.